Hello, welcome to part two. At least I think this is part two. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite little buck converters. Uh, you can get these on eBay for around, uh, you know, five dollars ship, and that's pretty cheap. And uh, this one in particular I got set up for 13.88 volts, and that's because I'm using it as a uh, flow controller. I have a system with extra solar panels and uh, you only need solar panels when you know you don't have a lot of sun and so the rest of the time I'm heating water with it so uh, basically if loads come on and the voltage on the battery drops below 13.88 volts uh, this will start supplying power now this system is this is set up with this little jack here so you can input a voltage of about 1.8 volts it starts turning this off so this in my system is going to be the slave there's going to be two of these in parallel which will give me around uh, 16 amps of current which is more than enough to supply my whole system but uh, these are very useful you can set them up for any voltage you want and uh, I'll show you how to do that but first uh, let me turn this little knob here and as you can see, at some point it starts dropping, dropping, dropping. And if we measure that voltage, that control voltage is about 1.8 volts. So if you have the uh, a Nano or a Uno, and uh, you set up the PWM mode, and you do a little filtering on it, you can feed that voltage right into this, and you can make the output just about anything you want. You can't go too low, but for a, a you know a battery charger, uh, you could set the maximum voltage on this at say 14.5 volts, and then you use the microprocessor to drop it down to whatever you want. So these are fairly uh, easy to work on, as it comes from uh, the factory. It is set up for almost 12 volts exactly, which is okay if you're powering a radio, but you're never going to charge your battery with it. And uh, in my other system, uh, I feed in a voltage to uh, uh, keep the panels at power point. So the panel never drops below, say, 60 volts or 58 volts or something like that, whatever your panel is. The, uh, these will, these will, they say they work from 36 to uh, 70, 72 volts. Uh, the range is a little wider on the low end, and you can get up a hair higher on the high end. But... Uh, I wouldn't go too high because it's only got a 75 volt fed in it. So uh, let me turn this off and we'll look at the modifications you have to do. Uh, first, let's look at this device. This is the 15 amp version and if you notice you have a lot of space over here and uh, the whole case is the heat sink. It's a simple buck converter. Uh, it's it's a standard chip that you would see in uh, uh, like a wall wart, but they use this as a high side driver, so <laughs> it's a it's a rather interesting circuit. I've talked about it elsewhere. Now, you know, heat is the danger of everything, so I take and I put holes in for extra ventilation, and when you mount this, mount it up on standoff so you have air cooling going all the way around it. I mean that's that's what I suggest. Now if you look over here, I have added these two diodes. And uh, that's what boosts it up that uh, extra voltage. And you can put two diodes in or three diodes. Uh, I'm using, you know, a standard, uh, you know, small power silicon. Uh, you know, shocky diodes can be anywhere from 0.27 to 0.5 volts. You can play around with the diodes. And you can also put a resistor in here. Uh, a resistor will add, a 100 ohm resistor will add basically about a tenth of a volt. So uh, that's what you can do there. Uh, you uh, unscrew this and uh, everything will just slide out sideways. As I said, you got to make, you got to make some holes. And use a block of wood like this it's a very small piece of metal it's not aluminum it's a uh, sheet steel 
it's uh, pretty fragile it'll fold up and if you try drilling it uh, you're going to cut your fingers to hell and so you know mount with two screws and you can make those four holes rather easily and if you may put a hole in the top uh, this will slide in there and that will hold it too you know don't cut yourself up on the bottom of the board this side up here uh, there's a, a big trace and this is basically the 12 volt output and it goes over here to a 300 ohm resistor and then it goes down to a zener and then it goes down to an opto isolator well what you need to do is you need to break this trace right here I have found an easy way to do it is if you take a, a drill that's about the size of the trace and uh, you just start that you can just go down a little bit you don't even have to go through the board but you can break that and then you maybe have a little piece you have to scrape but that's fairly easy to do then you drill these two holes and the diodes will go this way the band will go towards the opto isolator so like I say you can do two three of those or you can get do two in a resistor to make up whatever voltage you want now schematically it looks like this I, I drew this a little backwards this 300 ohm is really down here but basically you just have uh, 300 ohms normally just going to a zener and then you have the opto isolator here now this opto isolator turns on at about one volt it's like 1.05 it's pretty pretty close and so uh, you're stacking up this voltage the zener and whatever diodes and a little bit of uh, resistive drop and that's where you get your output now I've put a pin a jack on this and inside here I have a diode and a resistor and the diode prevents any elect outside electronics from basically shorting out the opto isolator so this can only turn it off I mean uh, turn off the output uh, it won't cause it to, to, to raise up in voltage so you have to set your uh, minimum maximum voltage with uh, these diodes and resistors or whatever you have but you can easily run the, the uh, a little wire underneath the board there's space there and so all you really need to do is drill these two holes or you know and then you uh, lay the components down or stand them up uh, if it's against the metal maybe better put some tape in there but this device is called a 15 amp 150 watt 36 to 72 volt converter and it'll be over in the automotive section because this is designed for golf carts things like that which had 72 volts or 36 volts and and someone wants to operate a 12 volt horn or car radio or something like that if you do a buck converter search these will not even show up but this is one of the few boards I mean just look at it you know you still have through hole components there's a couple surface mount underneath but everything's really easy to get at you got a space to put electronics in it, to me this is the best deal on eBay so that's about it for this uh, I'll be doing a part one which uh, shows how to operate a PowerPoint but again if you just uh, you know have an Arduino or uh, you know you know or whatever microprocessor and you can feed out you know a lot of them will do a, a zero to five volts you just feed in some voltage and you can cause this thing to shut off it's it's very useful I mean why reinvent the wheels uh, if you know you need to put some buck converter in your design get this already made up you have the inductor everything's worked out it's got a nice little case it's a deal so uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll do part one in not too long